Welcome to Type-C Tech Reviews. Today we're gonna to be unboxing the BenQ Mobius EX2710Q gaming monitor. And as always, if at any point during the video you wanna check out this exact same monitor, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. I do got you guys, but let's get this thing unboxed. All right, now this looks like a really nice monitor. It's brand new from BenQ. They just released this thing. And this is a pretty pricey 27 inch monitor, but I have very high hopes for it. So let's get this thing out. It opens from the top. Let's put this on the floor. As you can see, this is a pullout. So we're gonna lay this down. There's a handle right here. All right, in the box, you have some paperwork, the power cable to your power brick, a USB type B cable, a display port cable, and an HDMI cable. Then we have the power brick, which is not too big. Then we have what looks like a cable cover for the back. Yeah, so this is gonna go on the back. Nice kind of silver metallic -y look right there. So this is just gonna clip into the back just so it hides all the cables. That's pretty nice. And then we have the stand, which absolutely looks awesome in all the pictures. And look at that. That thing just looks beautiful. All right, so inside we have some plastic and then inside is like a red pattern and actually you can feel the pattern which is pretty cool now metal on the bottom right here and this is all high quality thumb screw however all of this this is all plastic it's nice plastic and it's very pretty and very nicely metallic silver but this is all plastic the base is metal though lifting the top off the top half of the sand comes right here this is pretty heavy right off the bat now this is quite a heavy piece okay this is a solid piece of metal right here this is a quite a heavy stand we have cable management in there right there it looks like we have swivel tilt and you get quite a bit of height right there it also has a cool design in the back right here before we get to the monitor we're going to put the stand together all you do put it in there and this is a high quality thumb screw so all you're going to need to do is just tighten it by hand you're not going to need a screwdriver for this and there we go overall a very nice looking stand uh, and very heavy all right but then here is the monitor let's get this stand on here this is a clip-in stand so very nice all you're going to do is just put the top in and clip it in just like that let's get this on the desk taking the plastic off wow that is really good looking from the back. Wow, this is probably one of the best, no, it is the best monitor that I've tested just from the back. I mean, these designs, really nice. This looks fantastic. This looks like a sports car. Mobius, really like that logo. We do have the controls over here, which I don't mind. It gets kind of hard if you're doing a dual monitor setup, especially if you have them in the middle right here, then you have to come up from the bottom and set from the side. So we have one, two, and then three buttons plus the toggle switch. So that's pretty good. I don't know about BenQ's menu system, so that'll be really interesting. I've actually never used a BenQ monitor before. Okay, then down here with ports, there is the power. We have an HDMI, another HDMI, a display port, a three and a half millimeter audio out, the US type B upstream, and then two USB type A's, which is actually, that's really cool. It also makes it easy. Those two USBs also make it easy to mount RGBs back here. If you do wanna do that, that would be pretty easy to do. Now, they do have the Trey Volo sound back here, so that should be really interesting to see the sound of this, because it's supposed to be quite good. That's something that BenQ actually puts a lot of work into. Now, I will say this is quite a thick panel, but there's a lot packed inside of it, so I don't mind that at all. Now, from the front, really, really pretty. Now, obviously, we've got a big bezel down here. However, the bezels on the side, you can see, are pretty small. Now, having the big bezel down here, I don't mind it at all. You have what looks like an HDR button, which is very interesting. But yeah, this is a very different looking panel and I absolutely love it. But let's get it set up, go through the settings and the first impressions, and then get initial gaming impressions as well as a ghosting test. I know one thing we forgot to do is actually this has height adjustability. It doesn't get insanely high, but it definitely gets high enough for most people. It then has tilt and it has swivel, which is really cool. All right, now beyond that, I actually got the cable cover kind of to clean the back up. As you can see right here, it's very easy to just put that in and it really hides the cable as well. As well, it goes through here and overall cable management is super easy with this, which is a big plus with me. All right, but let's get this thing turned on. All right, now that we're in, let's go to the settings because I've actually never used a BenQ monitor before. I like this. You have some kind of quick settings right here and then we can go into the full menu which is right here. We have display settings. This is actually interesting. They have different settings for the actual inputs. So for instance, there's standard game and then cinema. And let's see what happens if we change those. So it changes the picture profile a little bit. Um, we're gonna leave it in game. Let's go, let's go into what they call the quick menu and let's go into game. So it seems like you can change each one of those uh, individually. All right, so these are all the different color profiles. Uh, FPS, Display HDR, Cinema HDR, Game HDR, E-Paper, M-Book, SRGB, Custom Racing Game. 
Now, it looks like with all of those you have, you can change some stuff like brightness and stuff like that. I do like that they have an sRGB mode. But let's go into custom. Brightness is at 100%. We're also gonna turn the volume all the way up because we really wanna test these speakers out. And then there's a couple of different audio modes, which is kind of cool. All right, but let's go into NVIDIA control panel. All right, so it's at 1440p, but let's change it all the way up to 165 hertz. And then let's see if this thing can output 10 bits of color and it cannot. So this is only an 8-bit panel or a 6-bit plus FRC, although I'm... I'm guessing, I'm assuming it's probably a natively 8-bit panel. All right, guys, before we jump in game, let's test these speakers. There is supposed to be a dedicated subwoofer, and then we got, I think the speakers are around here and here, which is pretty cool. So let's let's test these things out. First, we're gonna try it on 20% volume, 50%, and then 100% volume. Okay, right off the bat, it uh, makes a world of a difference from them coming from here. Um, I was just using a monitor that had them Backfiring speakers weren't fantastic. These are very clear. I mean, these actually sound like legitimate speakers. There's actual bass that you can hear. Let's turn this up to 50% now. Very crisp, very crisp. There's not a ton of bass. Let's go up to 100%. They definitely get loud. Wow, a really surprising amount of clarity. These are definitely top notch, the best monitor speakers I have ever tested. Uh, it makes a world of a difference having it come actually in front of you. As you can see, I think the speakers are around here somewhere. Uh, there's one right here, and then there's one right here, and then a sub in the back. Uh, the sub, there's not a ton of bass, right? But there's definitely more bass than you would see on your typical monitor speakers. Definitely more bass, um, but it's not gonna be shaking the floor or anything. These are really crisp and really clear, and actually quite impressive. You definitely would not need to get speakers unless you wanted a subwoofer, then you would need to get it. But otherwise, I wouldn't say you would need to. These are definitely gonna be better than typical tweeters probably until you spend about a hundred bucks on some tweeters like I have these Edifier G2000s right here. These are nice uh, and they definitely get a little bit louder, but I would not say that they are a ton better than these, but you would have to spend that money or get a little bit up there to, to basically do better than these with clarity they're really good. We just finished that last clip. However, we never went into the sound profiles to actually change the EQ. So let's actually do that and see if that changes it before we make our full verdict on the sound quality because it was pretty impressive, although it lacked a little bit of bass. And for having a dedicated subwoofer, I felt like it should have more, but so it was an FPS, which is probably going to highlight the trebles, the footsteps, stuff like that. Let's play a song and see how that changes. FPS, RCG, way more bass with this one way more bass. That's actually very impressive. SPG, less bass, way more bass. Wow, impressive bass. Yeah, very impressive. I would say for music, best one would be RCG. Wow, that actually has quite a lot of bass. It's very clear. Uh, for speakers, I mean, these are, I mean, you're probably getting $150 speakers or more in this, you, you won't even need to get speakers unless you want a dedicated subwoofer. Obviously, this is not gonna compete with a dedicated subwoofer, but these are really good. Uh, personally, I'm all about budget, and if I was gonna build my own setup with this monitor, I wouldn't get speakers. I would probably get headphones, and then I would have these integrated speakers. They are that good. All right, but let's jump in Warzone, see how this thing games. All right, guys, right away, getting in Warzone, um, first thing immediately is the sound sounds really, really good. Uh, really impressive sound. Um, however, the brightness isn't as high as I would like it. Now, I personally like really bright monitors. Um, this one is not insanely bright. Uh, it has a high peak brightness, but again, that's in HDR. But yeah, the vibrancy is quite nice. It actually has, I'm pretty sure this has a pretty good wide color gamut, uh, which is something that this monitor would definitely be able to be used as a photo or video editing monitor as well as a very nice gaming monitor, which I think is really what they're gonna be going for in the market that is really, you know, someone that wants a really color accurate monitor. That's what's gonna be big with this. Overall, very smooth. It's 165 Hertz. We expect that. Now, the audio is really incredible. I mean, I don't have it in the FPS setting because I didn't like that. I have it in the more bass heavy setting and it sounds really good in game. Now, the thing that you're gonna have to think about is, are you gonna give up that brightness for the color accuracy and these speakers? And I would say, I think this is around $600, which is not cheap for a 27 inch, 
Um, however, this is a very premium 27 inch. Right away playing it, um, I was kind of skeptical because the stats, you know, BenQ is never big with their stats. It doesn't, the stats never wow you like something like LG. The stats always wow you with LG. However, actually using it is totally a different story. Um, after actually playing in this, uh, the speaker system is really good, way better than I expected. And the colors and vibrancy are quite good. The panel's overall quality is definitely on par with LG's monitors. Uh, you are getting a lower brightness. Everything combined, this is a very overall polished product and I really like it. All right, but one more test to do and that is the ghosting test. This is really gonna be quite interesting with this monitor. Okay, wow. So just putting it on the screen right now, I'm not sure what response time setting this is in. We're gonna have to go through the settings, but right away I am seeing very little ghosting, basically none. Um, this is on par with some of the fastest LG monitors. Now I'm gonna change my display port setting over to standard, see if that changes it. Changing it over to standard doesn't look like it changes the ghosting at all. So we're gonna have to find, I'm not sure if I'm actually missing this, but it doesn't actually look like there is response time settings in there, which is quite interesting. However, that's not a problem at all because we're not seeing any inverse ghosting. We're not seeing basically any ghosting at all. I mean, this thing is quite good, especially for fast competitive games. You could absolutely do that with this. I mean, look at we're. I know you're not gonna be able to see on the camera, so definitely check my full review, which I will actually directly show you uh, exactly what I'm seeing. So definitely subscribe below for the full review. It should be coming in a few days, but we are not seeing basically any ghosting. This is really good. All right, guys, we've already finished the entire video, but if you enable HDR in Windows and then turn on HDR with this HDR button, Totally different experience. And for this monitor, you should have HDR on like 95% of the time, unless you're doing color accurate work. But yeah, this thing in HDR, this is what this monitor is made for. It works really well. So go to Windows, turn on HDR, turn on HDR with this little button right here. And this thing, so much brighter. It hits its peak of 400 nits. It even looks like it might be more. That's absolutely the way you gotta use this monitor. And wow, I am really impressed. But yeah, if you guys wanna check out this monitor, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. But again, make sure to subscribe below for my full review on this monitor because it is coming very, very soon. But this was Type C Tech Reviews, and I'll see you guys in the next video.